Please use the link below to get the notes, questions and other videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to others for our daily new videos. Let's look at the global air circulation patterns. So we move forward to understanding this global air saturation. In this case, when you look at this global air saturation, it's showing us, it is showing us the pattern, how air moves. Here, we have what you call the ITCZ, which is the equator labeled zero degrees. This equator here, it is ITZZ, standing for intertropical convergence zone. Intertropical, within the tropics, there is convergence. The convergence means coming together. That's why you see these winds, they are coming together towards this point, moving away from a high pressure to a low pressure. Remember we said that the winds move from high pressure to a low pressure, from high pressure to a low pressure. That is why the direction is coming towards the low pressure. And at the low pressure, there is convergence. But we must understand that as these winds try to move from a high pressure to a low pressure, that is what we call the pressure gradient force that results into it moving from high pressure to low pressure, which is abbreviated as PGF. But as it tries to move to a low pressure, it is being acted upon by the Coriolis force. So the Coriolis force deflects wind either to the right or to the left. As you can see here in the Southern hemisphere, it is deflected to the west, in the, um, to the west also here in the Northern hemisphere, it is deflected. As it's trying to move from here, it is being acted upon. What causes Coriolis force? Coriolis force comes into existence because of the rotation of the Earth's surface. As the Earth rotates in that anti-clockwise direction, the winds end up being deflected. So it is deflected in that kind of manner. So as it is originating from this other side, those winds shall be referred to as the easteries, and the ones that are coming from the other side are also they'll also be referred to as as these ones are referring to as the westerlies. So we have the easterlies as they move from the west. Remember, winds are named from the areas of origin. So they move from this as they are deflected from east, going to west. Therefore, they will be known as easterlies. Okay, but it depends on the zone where they are because we have what we call the tropical easterlies. We have what we call the polar easterlies. So the polar easterlies they are called polar easterlies because they are moving from the east to the west, but originating from the poles. That's why we call them the polar easterlies. These ones are tropical easterlies because they're moving from the tropics. So this, um, global, uh, this global air saturation, or this group is divided into section. We have the intertropical convergence zone, the ITCZ. We have the subpolar uh, high pressure cell. We have, the sub, we have the subtropical high pressure. Then we have the subpolar low. And here we have the polar high. In other words, it is a hello. It is a H L H L H. So it will be high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. So when you talk about low pressure, you remember that low pressure, we said air is rising. Okay. But that is warm air is rising here. Then here, air is descending. Here, air is rising. Here, a is descending. So we know that at the poles, A is, um, I mean, it, this, it is experiencing very cold conditions. And therefore, that is what we look at as a high pressure, low pressure, and so on and so forth. So here I have incorporated the element of the pressure gradient force, the Coriolis force, the winds diffraction, and then the movement of winds from one point to another. Winds just don't move, they move or they grow because of the fact that there is difference in the pressure. So the difference in the pressure is what we call pressure gradient. But the force that results into winds to move from high pressure to low pressure is called pressure gradient force. Okay, hope you understand. We move forward. We have said that at uh, the equator here, we know that it is very hot. Why? Because as the Earth tries to, as the earth tries to rotate around the orbit, the sun will appear twice at the equator, which makes it hotter. And therefore, within the equator, we know that there is ascending air, and therefore the pressure is low. Okay. Then we go to look at the high pressure. At the high pressure, what happens here? The air is moving from where? From the equator, and it sinks to the high pressure here. So as it is moving from the equator, reaching here in the upper atmosphere, it sinks here. So in the same line, when it moves from here, coming to low pressure, 
reaching at the low pressure here, the subpolar, it rises. That's why we say it's rising air. So here at the poles, it is very cold. What happens there? Air is descending and therefore it's a high pressure. In the same scenario, here we have warm and cold air meeting at a low pressure, the subpolar, or we call the polar front. What is going to happen here is that we have got the polar easterlies from the poles, which is very cold. And we have also got the westerlies from uh, the subtropical high, which is a little bit hot or warm. And therefore, those two air masses that are of different characteristics are coming to converge here at a low pressure. And on converging, what happens? Warm air will be forced to rise. That's why we say warm air meets here. But you must for understand that when air meets, it does not enter into each other. It meets, and therefore the intensity of the cold air forces the warm air to leave, and then it rises up in the upper atmosphere. So we said that the winds that are found here within this region are westerlies. Why? Because they travel from west. The same way this is in the northern hemisphere, this is in the southern hemisphere. Remember, winds are named from the areas of origin. Therefore, we also have the easterlies. We call them tropical easterlies because of the fact that they are originating from the tropics. But because of the rotation of the earth, this wind is the, acted upon by the Coriolis force. Therefore, it is deflected to the west, but coming from the east. Therefore, we call them easterlies. The reason why we call them easterlies because the reason why we call them tropical easterlies because they are originating from the tropics. So that is why we name them as tropical easterlies. Then. You must note that winds are deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere, to the left in the southern hemisphere. Okay, that is what happens. If you will forget this, you try to draw letter S here. When you draw letter S here and you cross the equator coming down, you are starting drawing S here, coming down here. Note that the low pressure in the, um, in the northern hemisphere is rotating anti-clockwise as you're trying to draw S, you start like this. When you cross the equator coming to the southern hemisphere, it starts rotating clockwise. So we know that a low pressure in the southern hemisphere rotates clockwise. Okay, that is it. So we move forward to now our first topic. The moment you understand the basics of uh, this global air saturation, which we looked at in grade 11, then this will give you a firm foundation for you to understand the next topic or the very important topic that is greatly examinable and that is what we call the mid-latitude cyclones. What do we understand by mid-latitude cyclone? Like the name, like the way the name is, mid-latitude.